throughout the week, I always have calls about people trying to open accounts. I know this is very basic and mundane, but I'm just going to mention it because I know some of you out there have had this experience or maybe you need a little help, but just keep this in mind. So I was, I'm always focused on private property and data and stuff like that. And so when I'm dealing with Caleb and Brown or uh, Coinbase or the bank, I like Caleb and Brown, by the way, so I'm going to be biased. I get commissions from my referrals. Okay. So I'll, I'm a little biased. However, I do like their service. I wouldn't work with them and if uh, I didn't like what the, the type of service they provide but they are kind of caught in the middle as it were uh, because their government wants to them to investigate and collect data on the owners of their account holders so they're asking for information just like coinbase is asking for financial information source of funds source of wealth for the signer for the account holder so realize what's going on I'm telling you this because I want you to understand the language here because a lot of times you forget that you're opening an account for another party. It's your LLC. And then you're being asked for financial information about yourself. And so the response should be, what legal duty do you have to investigate my financial wealth when I'm not the account holder? What financial duty do you have to investigate the financial source of non-account holders? And if you do have a legal duty, no problem. I'm not, you know. Uh, I would like you to cite your legal duty, cite the law, because I want to read it. So step one, that's how I respond. I don't just give them what they want and beg for mercy. I say, well, okay, I understand if you have to do something, show me the law that requires you to do it. I'm a non-party. I'm not an account holder. My company is, and yeah, I own it, but I don't have the contract with you. My company does. The ownership of the company can change at any time. That's why this is an issue. So the other thing is, let's say I'm going to give it to you. Realize that the information you're requesting from me, now not, you can't always say this, but most of the time you can. The information you're requesting from me is subject to um, a non-disclosure agreement in which there are substantial penalties for disclosing to third parties. We can remedy that if you'll indemnify me against the penalties. That means you pay the penalty for me because I'm gonna to have to pay the penalty, right? Did I tell you how much it was? No, I didn't. Do you wanna ask? <laughs> do you even have the ability to do that, right? So we let's just start there. You see how this goes, right? Hey, I'll do it, but you know, over here, this is called negotiating with somebody out that's not in the room. You pull this trick on them too. Make them negotiate with someone who's not in the room. My company has substantial liquidated damages for not for disclosing uh, information that's trade secret. And that is what you're asking me for is a trade secret. I, I don't have to tell you why. Just know that it's a trade secret. There's another reason why we say trade secret, but we can get into that. So maybe I can give you a summary of what you're looking for. Tell me what actual legal duty you have. Cite the law. And then you're not trying to be combative. You're just saying, hey, look, look I'm with you. I'm, I'm trying to work with you because I like your service. Tell me what legal duty you actually have because you may not have read the statute. You're just telling me what your boss told you to tell me. So I read the statute and it says, oh, it says right here, you need to do this, this, and that. Okay, I'll do that for you. Or I will give you a summary or I will give you enough information that allows you to say you that's plausible that you did what you're supposed to do. That way, both our interests are protected. So think it through. So many times people have this difficulty and they uh, ask me for help and then I ask them, okay, so why are you not able to open the account? They don't tell me. Well, did you ask them? No. So you gotta, you gotta do this. It's your money, it's your property. So uh, I just want to mention that. So that's a basic technique that I like to use. All right, you can, it's called negotiating. Uh, just keep in mind, they could just say, we don't like you. <laughs> They're not required to provide you the service. So this is what we're dealing with. It's not like, you know, it's not like you're being denied access to the grocery store because of your race. <laughs> it's business, right? And you're a business and you don't have rights like a human being. Corporations don't have rights like a human being. So you got to be pragmatic in how you deal with people. But this is the way to do it. They, they have things called trade secrets. This is very useful. A trade secret is something that um, would jeopardize the functioning or the profitability of a business if it's improperly handled or disclosed. Everybody understands that and to a point where even the rules of discovery in federal and state court protect trade secrets from discovery. 
So that's why I use the term trade secrets. It's to help you all out. If you're ever in that situation, right? A lot of times you'll be, you'll in, end up in a situation. And then after that, you'll ask me for help. And if you've used this language, it's easier for me to help you. Oh, you just said the, the trade secrets um, that you've taken and you can exempt them from discovery. They are, yes, yes, you can. Yes. Okay. And, well, and I got a specific else. example. I built a, uh, a spreadsheet, which is a calculator for, for home costs, yeah. which I never give out to people because I've got a lot of hours of work into it. But I was at a deposition and the other attorney said, oh, well, we're going to need that, you know, your original call sheet. So can I say, well, you would be happy to give that to you, but there is a non-disclosure agreement. So if you're going to indemnify me, I could get this case to <laughs> help my case. I, I mean, it strengthened my case. So it, I had no problem giving it up. But I can say that at a deposition, say, well, yeah, but that's... You can ask for a by... What you can do is, uh, if, if he asks you at a depot, you weren't prepared for that, you can say it's outside the purview. Uh, however, <clears throat> you can you can just object, right? You can object and say, I wasn't prepared to answer that. Uh, however, now that I know that you want it, I'll ask the court for protective. For, for protective. Okay. Um, yeah. You can say that. that that's at a depot, you're not because that's that. outside the purview? Yeah, and you can just say, I'm not prepared to answer that because I don't have it. I didn't know you wanted that. But just the same, uh, now that I know that you want it at this deposition, I'm, I'm, I can't answer you. And I'm going to also, I'm going to ask the court for a protective order. And then you file the motion. Now, in your case, you could, you could also, you could do this. You could ask for the protective order and get it. And then you can waive certain aspects of it and then disclose what serves you. That way you're still protected. Okay. That's um, hopefully you have a record. I'm gonna have to review that to, to, to remember it. But. Yeah, there's there's like trade secrets and then like business practices or something. There's different things that are under the you have to look at the rules of civil procedure for uh rules of civil procedure for discovery and uh grounds for protective order. Okay. Gotcha. Protective order. Uh, look, when I tell you guys, give you guys information about disclosing things to the, you know Coinbase and whatnot, I'm not saying just be stubborn and don't talk to them, but make them cite their authority. Say, look, what what duty do you have? Let me look at the statute. Okay, I'll give it to you. Let's say, for example, they want to trust, they want your entire trust document. Okay, first of all, the people asking you for it are not competent to read it. Is is Jim showing us his massage? <laughs> hmm? Jim getting massage? That's yeah, I'm working hard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the people asking you for a legal document aren't competent to read it. We all don't understand this. So, you know, you, it's a legitimate question to ask them. So let's say you just need to get them off the hook, right? You're trying to work with them. That's why I say your attitude should be you're trying to work with them. I'm not saying, hey, answer my question or I'll never talk to you again. They'll say like, okay, we don't care. You're not in a situation to negotiate with them. We understand that. But what you can do is reasonably ask them, say, okay, who's going to have custody of the information I give you? Now, when you give them information, let's say they want the trust document. Go to LegalZoom, download a trust document, a generic vanilla one that says trust document on it, <laughs> and give it to them. And then at the bottom of it, just edit it and, say, and put, put a phrase in it that says, this document is subject to change without notice. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, okay. that way. Because because that, that's the problem with Caleb and Brown. They want the document that you say don't ever give them. Yeah, exactly. And right? So I'm saying. And, so, and so you're saying that you can go to LegalZoom and download a... Well, that's why, well, in this yeah. case, it would be, a, it would be a, an LLC but document. Everything, yeah, it, the, the, the thing I give you is the two-page operating agreement, which is fake. Operating agreement, that's yeah. the word. It says operating agreement. So you put in there, which is not in there, but you can add it in there. This document is subject to change without notice. And the reason why you put that in there is because if you disclose this to a third party, what you've done is you've waived your uh, rights to disclosure in a civil proceeding. So if an attorney wants to get your document and he knows you have an account there, he can just ask him for it and he's got it. He, you can't object because you already waived it when you give it to the third party. You're waiving your rights when you do this. So you have to put in the document or a condition of disclosure is... I'm not waiving my rights to third party disclosures or court orders and which is not really it's easy not easy to enforce that but what's really easy to enforce is if I put a clause in there that says this document is subject to change uh, without notice or without additional notice okay and the reason why you do that is because 
let's say an attorney does get it in a civil proceeding and he gets it and you write a letter, you send a notice to the court and you say, well, that document's outdated anyway, so you can't use it for what you're trying to use it for. And then the court's going to direct its attention to you and what you have rights to defend against. So think this stuff through. We're trying to protect privacy. We're not just trying to give up our privacy. That's what's going on. They're trying to get around the rules of civil procedure through using corporations that you're doing business with. Mm -hmm. That's all we're trying to accomplish. We're not trying to be smart asses. Mm 